Roger Dickens, welcome on stage. Please, please stop. Please stop. Thank you. Thank you. Stop. Sit down, please. Um, I'd really sincerely like to thank everybody, um, especially, obviously, the festival for the opportunity to come here and experience all this and to be here. And, and you, know, you know, it's just been wonderful. I, I've just felt so welcomed. And I've got to say, you're giving Torquay a bad rap. Um, I don't know if you've been there. Yes, there are palm trees, but it doesn't always rain. It's rather like Nice. Well, a little smaller and, yeah, dirtier and not many boats. And the winters are really brutal. But I think I owe Torquay for being here today. Um, my earliest memory, actually, of anything was of, of, of watching Mickey Mouse and Felix the Cat cartoons. And I don't know why, but my, my dad had a projector that somebody had given him. And he set up this little theater in our attic. So like, I guess I was about five, six years old. We would climb up the stairs, up this rickety old ladder to the attic and sit there in amongst the dust and the old things from the war and whatever and, and watch these cartoons. And for me, that, I've never forgotten that. It was kind of magic. And then I went to school and I had to walk to school and walk home in the rain winter or summer. And especially in the winter, there was absolutely nothing to do, absolutely nothing. And there's a little film society opened, a couple of, uh, a couple of people, film enthusiasts opened this little film society. And I got to watch all these amazing movies, uh, like Last Year in Marienbad, which I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, and, and um, you know, La Laventura, uh, La Lente, and... Um, uh, you know, all sorts of wonderful movies, and including Peter, Co Peter Watkins' War Game, which probably I remember more than any of them because in the audience, which was about six people, uh, two old ladies who were coming out of the rain and were sitting in the front row were watching this, this film about a nuclear holocaust in London if they dropped the bomb, and they collapsed on the floor, fainted, and they had to stop the film. Well, uh, you know, they were revived. And that, that was a film that the BBC banned after whatever that year was, 65 or something. As soon as they realised what it was, they let out these few prints to these film clubs. And thereafter, it was banned for 25 years. But as a teenager, I actually got to see it. It was fantastic. It must have been the weather, but I couldn't wait to get out of Torquay, really. And as you did back then when you didn't know what to do with your life and you didn't want to go and do a nine-to-five job wherever, um, I decided to go to art college. And um, so I went to art college. And art college was outside Bath in the countryside, a tiny little village. You know, it was 25 miles from a cinema and there was no buses, or the buses were once every six days. And, um, but there again, the, this, a couple of... Film enthusiasts open up a little cinema in this village, Corsham, and suddenly I'm watching films by Jean Pierre Melville, who's probably my favorite filmmaker of all time, or Tarkovsky and Goddard, as well as Sergi Leone and uh, Peckinpah. And, uh, so they had all night screenings of these amazing movies. So I would sleep in the day and go to the cinema at night and watch all these movies. And uh, and then that, the cinema only lasted a few years, but they were the few years I actually was at this, this art college. It closed. I mean, there's no way you run a cinema in a little village like it was. And then, uh, in more luck, as I was leaving art college, a friend told me the National Film School was opening up. And I still didn't really know what to do. I, I'd, by that time, I'd loved photography. I'd taken up a camera. I'd met this street photographer Roger Main, who taught at the, at the art college. And, and, and I discovered my love for, for stills photography and it, that, that kind of imagery. But it was the film school, really. I applied to the film school, and it was my short time at three years at the film school that really 
you know, gave me the confidence uh, not to speak but to shoot. And, 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 and it, it, if without the film school, I don't think I'd, I'd be here. Uh, and I don't think without the weather in Torquay, I'd be here because I wouldn't have wanted to get away from such a lovely place. So what happened then? I left the film school. And again, I was really lucky. Suddenly, uh, um, I managed to shoot documentaries that nobody else wanted to do because there weren't many people that wanted to sail around the world in a yacht and make a film. And there weren't many people that wanted to go uh, uh, to Eritrea in the, fo in the war. And I wanted the chance to make a film because I wanted to establish myself as a documentary filmmaker. Coming here from Los Angeles, you have plenty of time to think about these things in a plane. And I thought, and thank you, I was reminded just now about it. I've been doing cinematography, shooting films for 40 years. And, you know, a award like this is, it's really quite moving because I guess it's about, you know, my life, you know, what I've loved doing all those years. I, I say, I've been so lucky, I've been so lucky that in um, 1982, I've been working with this ex-student of the film school called Mike Radford. i had been doing some documentaries with him and he moved on to shoot features and his first film was called Another Time, Another Place and that showed here at the Cannes Film Festival in 1983 so which is quite a long time ago so that was the first film that I'd shot that was here and some, well, I think he, he told me while he was at the, film, uh, at the festival here a producer came up to him and said oh, I love the film, what do you want to do next? And, and Mike didn't really have an idea, but he'd always loved the book, George Orwell book, 1984, and he just said, 1984, I'd like to make a film of it. And the producer said, okay. So the next year, is, you know, like almost my second serious film, we're doing this big studio uh, film of 1984 with um, John Hurt and Richard Burton. It was Richard Burton's last film, and it was, just the most wonderful, wonderful experience. And of course, in my naivety, I thought that every film, every feature film would be just like that, as as much fun <laughs> and, as, and as satisfying. I mean, kind of could be a bit wrong on that one. but um, So yeah, uh, that started side of my career. And then, and then again, I was really lucky. I was in London and I was giving up the film industry because I worked on a a big American production that I won't mention. And, uh, and uh, my agent um, said, oh, well, has this script come in that you probably won't like at all? It's very strange. The first half seems totally different than the second half. You won't like it. And I asked what it was and who was going to direct it. And I was told it was called Barton Fink. And the, there were two directors, and they were the Cohen brothers. And I said immediately, ah, put my name put my name in, you know, I, of course I'm interested. And I met with Joel and Ethan in Notting Hill in a little cafe, and I think we got on, I hope, I think, I never know what they're thinking, they don't talk much. <laughs> but we seem to get on. And, and, you know, I think it's 12 films later. We just did, is it 11 or 12? We've just done a film in the winter together, The Hail Caesar, which I really love. There was a lot of movies, a lot of celluloid, oh, celluloid. Um, and, uh, Anyway, Joel told me later, you know, the film that I had such an unhappy experience on and made me put my, my place in London uh, on the market and I bought a little place down in Devon back in Torquay. I couldn't wait to get back. And um, Joel told me later, yeah, that they, they'd rung up directors for recommendations and they'd rung this particular director. And he said, yeah, but I wouldn't recommend Roger. He's the last person I'd recommend because... He doesn't like using multiple cameras and he operates himself and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and they, uh, he said they looked at each other and said, yeah, what's wrong with that? That's not what we like. So, so here we are all those years later. You know, I got a speech, but I'm not going to... I'm just rambling, I know. But I, I, all these years later, it, I wouldn't be here for a number of things, for all the wonderful people, some of whom in the room, that I've worked with over the years... Uh, the crews, you know, directors, actors, crews, and I, you know, most of all, I wouldn't work, wouldn't have met my wife unless I'd have been on a film where she was script supervising. 
and that was 26 years ago. So, um, yeah. I, I sincerely mean this, that um, it's all right to celebrate the imageries and the work, but it wouldn't be anything without a script and it wouldn't be anything without a director. You can't just shoot images, so it'd just be totally meaningless. The films, the films really are belong, films are belong to a director. And I hope over the years I've managed to contribute and add something. And had a, myself had a lot of fun along the way and I plan to do a lot more of it. So I'm a bit worried about getting an award like this because it's far too early. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Right, thank you so much for really from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.